the great lie of our generation is the phrase social media. It's really not social media. It's anti-social media. When you put people in a group, when you put them in a room, you put them in a restaurant, they will ignore each other in order to pay attention to something that it basically is just ones and zeros on the screen. Like, in, if you saw 10 people, 10 friends, people who like, actually like each other, standing around all reading their own book, you would think these people need to be institutionalized, like there's something seriously wrong with them, right? That is not human behavior, that is not social behavior, and I think it's really costing young people psychologically. That overdose of internet usage may cause depression and exactly the opposite of what it's meant to do in the first place, the feeling of isolation. The inventors, creators, you know, and it's, it's me, it's Mark, it's Kevin Systrom and Instagram, it's all of these people, um, understood this consciously and we did it anyway. We have no privacy, we have no peace, we have no off switch. You can't get away from it. A third of us, a third of us, use our smartphones with our friends and our family whilst eating. 50% of us wander along the streets looking down at our smartphone. 11% of us say that we actually cross the road with our smartphone looking down at it. A third of us will wake up and within five minutes reach for our smartphone. What you will see is an increase in suicide, an increase in depression, an increase in diabetes, cancer, and, and all of these other things, because what's happening is we're feeling more and more lonely, and we're relying on technology to help fill that void. The problem is that's what's causing it, just like the alcohol. I feel depressed, I have a drink, but now I'm even more depressed, I have another drink. It's exactly the same thing. And so what you will see is increases in suicide and mass murder, because the thing that produces mass murder and suicide is the same thing. You no longer feel like anybody cares about you and you and you literally become anti-social. Okay, Facebook doesn't have nicotine in it, but study after study has argued it can make us depressed. One of Facebook's first employees says he feels guilty about the platform he helped build. So the biggest negative impact of course is an imbalance coming from spending so much time on one facet of your life and not on the other. So we'll see changes in physical health, we'll see an increase in sedentary behavior, an increase in obesity, we'll see increases in social isolation or depression, a decrease in work or school performance, irritability, mood changes, and more importantly, changes in primary relationship, whether it be with parents, children, or among spouses. Today we live in a world now where it is easy to confuse truth and popularity. And you can use money to amplify whatever you believe and get people to believe that what is popular is now truthful and what is not popular may not be truthful. When people look back on their lives and they wonder what their lives have been like at the end of their lives, you look at the last things they say, they are talking about those moments that happen in that white personal space. So it's sacred, it's important to us. Now what I'm gonna do is show you how much of that space is taken up by screens across time. In 2007, this much, that was the year that Apple introduced the first iPhone. Eight years later, this much. Now, this much. That's how much time we spend of that free time in front of our screens. This yellow area, this thin sliver, is where the magic happens. That's where your humanity lives. And right now, it's in a very small box. Before cell phones were introduced, who would have ever believed if you told them that you were going to get to a point in human history where it is totally common to see people staring at electronic screens while they're all sitting together at a dinner table. They're just staring at this electronic screen and that screen is compelling. You know it, I know it. This thing is becoming a part of your life in a weird way yeah. that nobody anticipated. If it keeps going in the direction that it's going, it's going to get weirder in a way we never anticipated before. Now, I don't want to blame the device. It's not the smartphone's problem. The problem comes down to our behavior with the smartphone, and that is a good thing, because we can choose to change our behavior. We can choose to act differently. We can choose to stop looking down and start looking up. 
It might surprise you that on average, you spend two hours, 25 minutes a day on your smartphone. And if you're considered to be a heavy user, you will double that to three hours, 45 minutes. And that time, the time that we spend in our virtual homes is at the expense of interaction in our real homes, in the real world.